Hello everybody, welcome to the I Am IT YouTube channel. My name is Shabal Dan as ever, I am the IT Geek. Welcome back to another uh, Nerdio Wednesday installment. Now I know, I think I said in my last uh, last episode, last week this was going to be like the last, that was going to be the last episode in the current format, but a bit of a scheduling conflict at the moment, so I'm just, I'm still working on uh, the new format. So I'm not going to give anything away, but hopefully this is going to be like the last episode where I just do a bit of a, kind of a show and tell demo um, and we're going to go into the new format hopefully starting next week so we've got loads of cool Nerdio and, and EUC AVD Windows 365 content coming um, it's going to be a collaboration piece so keep an eye out for that uh, but yeah so today I kind of wanted to just jump into the my demo portal again uh, so obviously I've, I've covered quite a bit already but one area where I think is really powerful within Nerdio is a unified application uh, catalog and unified application manager kind of area this has obviously grown over time uh, with a, with more integrations and um, the the like. If you look at the the current integrations, so if you go to applications unified catalog, it supports um, not just um, you know integration with Nerdio, but uh, no, so uh, Intune and Nerdio. But you've also got SCCM and and all the, there's quite a few different application deployment uh, scenarios it suits. Um, so. Look, at the moment, as you can see, there are two sort of um, ones that are there. We've got a 7-zip one, and we've got a notepad one there. Uh, shows the vendor, shows the repository. So these are already kind of part of sort of ready-made apps that then you include. But So you can deploy those, but also, again, existing you know customers will want they'll have their own app deployments, right? So you can actually go to Import Application. Now, straight away, you see we have this, um, we have this warning. Uh, so to upload or import an application, you need to create a private repository from the settings of the Nerdio Environment Unified Application Management and add. So if we actually go, we can actually add um, we can add a repository for this and we can also see the different integrations. So let's go down to settings. Uh, let's go to environment, uh, Nerdio specifically, and the Unified Application Management, right? So straight away, look, we can see that we've got from a, we've got a Winget got a Winget repository, it's public. We've got a Shell Apps repository. You can integrate with SCCM. Now I don't have I don't have an SCCM server, but um, potentially in the new format that we're gonna do, I can I can do some demos or we can do some demos around that because I will be getting an SCCM server. Um, but let's just say we want to add. So this is where we can add another repository or we can link an SCCM server, but let's just go to, so here we can, we, this option allows us to create a private Winget repository to import and manage those applications. So straight away we can go to add, just give it a name, uh, demo repo, right, select a resource group where we want to put it, let's put it in there. Uh, now here we can have a use an existing storage account or we can create a new one. Now I've only got one that's supported, so if we just go to create a new one, Again, with the creating the Vagalax workspace, I've got existing ones. Let's just put it in this Shabs Law test that I've got. Uh, and again, we can we link it to our app service plan. Um, so if we look here, the customized resource names from a web application perspective, um, that's what the, the web application will be called. From a key vault perspective, that's what the key vault will be called. So these are all customized resources that are going to be deployed. It tells you what zone they're going to be deployed in. Again, you can put custom tags in as well. So we've got a web application, we've got a key vault, um, we've got the Cosmo account, we've got the application insight, and we've got the storage account. So let's click on there. So these are specific name and prefix for the new resources, and these names will be post fixed with a random string. So no, the web application must be created in the same region as the selected app service plan, right? So because that's already in each US, this needs to be in each US as well. And then we can just click on OK and create that. So that'll create the repository that we need to be able to import. Uh, so that's a repository where we would we would you know import or put all our sort of wing applications. Um, and from there we can then. Uh, so that's kind of creating. Let me just go back to the unified catalog, right? So this is where once that's once that's done, we can that'll show um, we can import applications from from that uh, repository. But then we've also got some deployment policies here. So it's not just the, the you know, the, the actual unified catalog where we can put apps from different repositories, either, either you know, Shell or Winget or SCCM, etc. But then we've got deployment policies as well. So these are our overall sort of deployment policies or we've got one-time deployments as well. So here's where we can essentially add. Um, so these deployment policies, they're gonna ensure the target devices meet the desired configuration state. So again, this is checking policy compliance 
Um, and this gets reassessed on a regular basis as well. Um, so again, let's just go demo app policy. Give it a description if we want we to generate with AI, which is quite cool. Um, so this is where we could add um, a new application. We can either install an app, install a group, uninstall an app, or uninstall the group. And here's where we can select. Um, so again, there's no favorites at the moment. If I just go notepad, let's find it. Uh, let's just go. Okay, I've not got any applications in there, so it's not going to find anything. Or we can uninstall an app. And again, if we have apps, we can in, we can do that. We can install a group, or we can uninstall a group. Um, so this is again, this is a, a a policy that we're doing. So repeatable, right? Um, so with the install app bit, we'd select the application we want to install. Um, again, here if we wanted to add, just cancel that. If we wanted to, we could add another another application if we wanted to. And then so here's where we can deploy the target. So is it personal or is it is it ABD? Is it a specific workspace or is it a personal ABD desktop or is it uh, the the pooled one? So leave it on personal. Um, Oh, so just add a new target. Any user group, again, you can specify the user group here. So I could just, I think I've got an AVD user group, I believe. Uh, yeah, so I could just specify the AVD users to target. And any host pool here, I can target my IMIT Geek host pool that I've got. So, and here's where it shows the concurrency balance. So this is essentially, if we click there, so the concurrency balance is going to allow you to specify a maximum number of concurrent application tasks. So again, this is about, you know, looking at the... The amount of maybe host amount of host session hosts that are in um, and so when it's set to global this number will be the maximum task this policy across all host pools or when it's set at the host pool level this will be the maximum task for host pool for this policy and this only applies to AVD pools right so again we've got the option to do it by host pool or by global so again we can set the the maximum number of jobs again it depends on you know if you're doing it out of hours you might want to put maximum number of, you know more like more jobs uh, and then again, if we again if we deploy an application, you might want to do it in a maintenance window. Here's where you can select that maintenance window if you just want to deploy it as and when. Again, if you're doing it to um, if you want to put the you know the the, the the AVDs in drain mode so people can't log in, you can select that there as well. Okay, and that's where you can just save the configuration here. Um, so let's just close. Oh, yeah, change that. Um, and once you've saved that, that will create the policy. Let me just add a description here because it's not letting me demo policy. So obviously in my example, I don't actually have any applications, so which is why it's not letting me save it. But you get the gist. This is how you would add a policy to install it, right? And then with one-time deployments, this is where, again, just, just one-time policies that have been created again. Um, so if I was to go back here um, to Unify Catalog, and just deploy this um, again I could um, install it uh, again add, add, add the target as I see fit AVD users like I did any host pool I could just drop down and select that one I could change this to AVD if I wanted to AVD users um, and then again just click on deploy to deploy that uh, so this is where it would show in the one time when I come back down to um, Deployment policies, if I also deploy that one time, that's where that would show. Um, again, if we come down here, this is where we've got the app groups. Again, we can add an app group. So there's no app groups that have been configured. Um, and again, depending, we'll just give it just demo app GRP. And again, depends what application we want to put this for. Um, I've not deployed any, but and again, the, the, the inbuilt ones already doesn't include those for my policy. So again, you need to add in your applications, you need to add in your repositories before you get to this point, obviously, um, and add the app group. Uh, and this is where we can integrate with Shell App. So it's already got, a, like a, I said, a default shell. Um, so this is where we could put the, the this is what we're going to do. We're adding a, a Shell App here um, to our repository. So demo app. Give it a description. This is a demo app. And who's a publisher? Again, you can put the, the name, IT Geek. Is it going to be public or not? And then um, that's just, just a general from a detection perspective. Again, um, this is where you put in the custom script to detect whether the application is installed. This is the install script. So again, 
my, I'm not really good with shell, but you can understand here, you need to put on the detect, scrape the, un, the install, the uninstall and the version, and once you run that, you would create it, and that would add. So let's look at, let's look at, for example, let's look at the notepad one to give an example. So general, just an example of shell app, and public's turned on from a detect perspective. So this is what the detect script would look like. Um, again, it tells you sort of program files. That's the way the base path is. The folder name is Notepad++ within program files. Um, and the program folder full path um, is the, the basically the, the, the base path plus the program folder name. Uh, and then again, just the, the value to, to the program folder exist. Um, and then finally, the program folder name again repeats that that's your actual dot, dot executable file. Um, so that's basically detecting whether or not the application is installed on the host or not. And if it isn't, this is where the un, this is where the install script comes in. Um, so again, the install folder name telling you where that is, telling you where the install folder full path is. And if it exists, you then test the path. And here's where we're doing the new item path and doing the install, the install.exe. Um, and now this is very important because this is this is the repository, the the shell app repository where it's, it's getting the install file from, which is um, it's a GitHub, so GitHub repository there, and again just invoking install URL, um, so that's the web request, starting the process, and then obviously completing the install. But then again, you need to include the uninstall path as well. So very very similar, but again it's it's it's, it's just calling the uninstall command. And finally, version control here. So again, similar how you would again if you if you're supporting uh, shell apps and shell scripts, that's the same thing you'd do. Make sure you get those scripts correct, otherwise it's not going to work right. And here's where we do the integration. So we've got SCCM or we've got Intune. Um, so again, I, I, in my new format, which I'll I'll be doing in the next couple of weeks, I will do some stuff over SCCM in specifically. Because um, I, you know, in the new form, I'm going to get a, a CCM server. Um, so Intune extraction is still in in beta, um, but again, this is where you can um, extract Intune um, deployments and applications. And once the once the we've not linked to CCM server yet, but we'll do more on that later. Obviously, it's AVD, right? So AppAttach is also supported. So we've got Nerdy AppAttach images, or we've got AppAttach images here. So this is where you can add an AppAttach package. So again, you look through the self-managed image or, or the image library. I've not got any Appetach images, but you would select the Appetach image, you do, do the image version, um, a temporary replica, temporary host pool. And again, you just go down here and select the package. Um, again, I could probably do a more deeper dive into this if you want to see that in the new format that we're going to be doing. Um, but I just kind of want to show some of the features from a higher level that are available when it comes to that unified application management. And again, you have the Apatat certificates as well here that you can add um, to manage those. So again, very very unified, it's, so it's called, right, unified application. Um, but you've got your whole catalog here, which you can add different apps to. Um, and hopefully it should actually let me import an application. Uh, it's probably still adding that. If I come back down, environment, it says it, Nerdio. Find application management. I think it's still, yeah, it's not quite finished that yet. Uh, can I refresh anywhere? No, not refresh button. But this is where we, we, like I said, I added, I added my probably still creating it. Um, but let's go back up here. So that's essentially what I just wanted to show some of the feature set and, and from a high level. Uh, the different integrations that are available with the unified application management. Um, so I, I definitely have a play about with that if you're if you want to you know use it and integrate it with SCCM and, and Intune still in beta. But um, the the shell apps and the Winget apps are quite again interesting, especially if you if you've got those um, sort of private libraries or even if you know use public library. But I'll do some more content a bit deeper dive in my new format for that. Um, so this is just a very high level kind of introduction to unified application management, some of the features you've got in there. Um, so thank you very much for watching. I've got some useful links in my in my uh, description below, um, including my um, my kind of link to my become a member. My member content's all around Microsoft exams, right? I've got three levels, level one, two, and three. Level one is more kind of associated with um, the uh, introductions of fundamental exams. Level two is more 
fundamentals and then associate level level three is my sort of expert level stuff i've got i am going to be adding to that as we go along it just takes a while to do that content so yeah thank you very much for watching and until next time goodbye